Hey guys, welcome to another video from Skinny Medic. It's been a short minute since we've done an update video and you've been getting harassed pretty good, so. Yes, I've had friends who've been like, um, do you think it's time for a video? And I think last week I said, yeah, it's probably time. And it's just been, it's been hectic. <laughs> yes. Getting into new routines. He's back with work stuff. We're trying to get back to school stuff. And so fitting everything into the day and doctor's appointments and problems we're working through um, has made it a little hectic. And we've been saying for a week, we've got to do a video. Yeah. So here we are. <laughs> so once again, we appreciate all the support you guys have given us. We still people still donating to the GoFundMe. And we really do appreciate that. Uh, we definitely, obviously, foremost are asking for prayers uh, and support there. And we appreciate it. We feel it. We've seen God move. We've seen God work and God answer prayers and God open doors for us. So we appreciate that. But obviously, we appreciate the financial support. Uh, we appreciate the one who sent gifts to gays. Like, that's been pretty cool to see that for people sending gifts, gift cards. Just kind of showing him some love. So we appreciate that. Um, I definitely just want to say we appreciate it. Yes, he has gotten very excited about the people who just don't even know him you know, personally that are sending him things to help him stay, um, I guess, encouraged. And the Legos people have sent have been good because that gets him up doing something. And he has started back school. He doesn't want to <laughs> because, you know, what 14-year-old kid wants to do school. But um, we are getting back into some routines. So we had, a, we had a really nice holiday weekend after we came home. We didn't do any family get-togethers. We opted just to be home because a lot of people had been sick. And my mom didn't even want us to come to her house. She called begging us not to because a lot of the family had been sick and she was just worried. Um, which was fine because Gage wasn't ready for the chaos and the commotion of the holidays. We had my family, his family, and two different friends of his bring us Thanksgiving food over the course of Thursday through Sunday. So we yeah. ate really well. It was actually really nice. Like you didn't have to cook. I didn't cook a darn thing <laughs> and I ate great. <laughs> yeah. Like we started mixing the car. We really like this broccoli casserole. We like this turkey. We like this dressing. We got the best of everybody's meals. <laughs> it was kind of nice. <laughs> so that was, that was really nice. And we appreciated some people doing that for us. Um, he had a good weekend and he mm. was, he was really gaining weight. And then last week, um, we had some trouble with the pick line. It, the nerd home health nurse last Monday could not get blood to draw back on it for his labs. And so she had put in an order for some treatment she could do on that called Activase, I believe, where they could treat that to flush it and clear that up. She was gonna do it the next time she came, but then that night we couldn't get TPN to run at all. It kept giving us error and I was on the call, phone with the on-call nurse for 30 minutes, problem solving through that and we could not get the TPN to run. Couldn't get the lines to flush hardly. Um, so he missed TPN that night, and then about the same time he missed TPN, he started having some of the same issues he'd had that put us in the hospital. Like those just all of a sudden kicked back up. So just not having TPN and with that, he lost almost four pounds in a 24-hour period. So got in touch with the doctor. We, I, we, I asked him to retest for C. diff, mm -hmm. and he was due for Remicade, and we were having a fit getting the Remicade infusion scheduled Friday. Um, because we're trying to do the patient assistance program because apparently it's, I think I saw the, the hospital bill and it was like 20 something thousand dollars yeah. for this infusion. And I'm like, okay, yeah, so we can't just, you know, pay that with the debit card. Yeah, good gosh. Um, we have a savings, but you know, a few of those and there goes that. Yeah. Um, so we, we ended up between showing that the C. diff might still be there him declining again for a few days. We got the TPN working, like they send a nurse out the next day to fix that. Um, and we got it running, thankfully, but he was having issues. He was back to bleeding again, and it was going back to just, it wasn't like formed anymore. Mm. So Thursday after stool test came back, they decided to put him back in the hospital Friday, which is not what we wanted to hear. Um, but it was mainly to get the Remicade infusion because we could not get outpatient organized. Like I called every day, the doctor mm. had called, it was just, Healthcare system is a mess. Sometimes mm. you have wonderful things work out and then sometimes you feel like you're just fighting the world. So back into the hospital Friday, we were there till 9, 30, 10 o'clock. They discharged him home, mm -hmm. um, but he got a Remicade infusion. He got antibiotics started back and he ended up on another blood transfusion because his hemoglobin had already dropped to 6.5. Mm -hmm. um, so, but he at least got to come home. We didn't have to stay because other than those issues, he's been doing really well. His energy's good. You know, his appetite's good, so. Yes, um, like I said, he's up doing school. He's up to 104 pounds. He's bouncing around 104, give or take a little. Um, the TPN has been fun. 
Whew, yeah, like working with that pick line, and when you have a pick line, you're, you have a risk of infection. Uh, it's, it's higher, and so that's a good source of infection. And so honestly, I've been paranoid, paranoid about it because I told Candace, I was like, if it was a, a normal patient, I would absolutely do everything I could to keep that pick line clean, like wiping alcohol wipes, letting it dry, being careful with instruments, with syringes. But it's when you're your son, it's a whole different ball game. Like I know that if I, he gets infected, it's possibly something I did. So I had dreams about it. Like for the first few nights, I dreamed that there was air in the line and that he was getting air embolism into the line, which we call stroke, PE, all kind of stuff. So bad things. I'm dreaming about that all night. Uh, I dreamed one night that I set it to one ml an hour, which it's about 2,200 mLs which would mean he got about 12 mLs out of a 2200 bag. So luckily with that pump they sent us, you can't mess it up. Like it's idiot proof. But yeah, we can't reprogram it so, if we wanted to. <laughs> but yeah, I had several drinks and keep having drinks, weird stuff about that pick line and TPN. So. And I keep wanting to get up and go check on him in the middle of the night, but then I get in trouble because I accidentally wake him up. Yeah, but right. I wake Quit up thinking, <laughs> what if it's not running? What if there's air in the line? Yeah. Like all these things and I'm just like, okay, stop. Um, but we, I mean, we both have medical backgrounds. We have a medic here who's used to doing all that stuff. And then I was occupational therapy assistant. So I've been around sick patients, but we looked like two <laughs> untrained nurses the first night trying to get him hooked up. And I was like, I should have videotaped you trying to draw it up. Like that was hilarious. But, <sighs> yes. And then, so we've kind of, we have a routine. Yep. He does part. I do part and I disconnected in the mornings. Easy. We do have to put flush heparin through the lines in the morning. Mm -hmm. Um, to make sure there's no clots build up and stuff, but we have a routine for the most part. It runs smooth We've had a little minor issues here and there um, But we're getting getting the hang of this. We're gonna be right TPN professionals <laughs> um, But yeah, the TPN has been great like keeping him and get weighed up um, He does get in the chipmunk cheeks. He looks mm. like Alvin from the chipmunks Yeah, so I told him I was gonna make him a shirt for Christmas. It just has a big A on it um, I think what else? We had a follow-up appointment today. Mm -hmm. um, the doctor does not feel like he is progressing the way they would like to see him progressing yet. Part of that could be because of the C. diff and the E. coli, and he had a lot of things fighting against him. Plus, the Humira wasn't—he wasn't responding to it the way he was supposed to. So, we are supposed to go out four weeks for the next Remicade infusion, but I don't feel like he'll make that, and neither does she. Mm -hmm. We feel like. We will probably be looking at another one at two weeks and so in about two weeks he will be coming off the antibiotic again so if he has another little flare-up issue like he did we will know for sure it's the Remicade because after two rounds of antibiotics there should be no question about C. diff at this point so if he has some more issues it would definitely point to needing a Remicade infusion at two weeks they will actually check his Remicade levels there and they will check his calprotectin I think I'm saying mm -hmm. that right because it's in the 700s and it should be below 50 for inflammation and the last time they checked it it was in the end of September and it was like 400 so it was high then but it's still high now and so she's like we really need to start checking that more often to see how the medicine's working because those numbers are, are way too high there's still inflammation in there so we need the Remicade to work we talked about the next steps if those don't work there are several other medicines out there we can try um, Surgery is not off the table. So already doing some research on the best hospitals for that. There are some closer to us mm -hmm. that are ranked very highly high in the country for um, gastro surgeries for children. So, I mean, we could do it here. The doctor says she has confidence in the surgeries here, but um, I, if I can drive a few hours and get one that's ranked number seven out of 50 in the country, I think I'd rather do that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so there's less complications complications, and um, it's just as successful for him as we possibly need it to be. Mm -hmm. So, but Did it? I think that was everything that we needed to kind of update. It has been hectic trying to get back into routines. You know, um, I'm used to juggling being mom, wife, mm. teacher, and all the things, and so now it's like thrown in there a nurse. But, um, <laughs> He is like getting up and doing things on his own um, more, which is good. I'm not quite hand, waiting on him hand and foot as much anymore. But um, but it's just, it's a lot. So, but we do appreciate all the prayers and the encouragement. Um, definitely have felt those and yeah. still need them because we're not really out of the woods until we start seeing some remission mm. happen. Um, they need to see inflammation numbers go down. And they've also talked about that there's a chance that they need to do another colonoscopy just to see what's going on in there if 
he's not responding to medicine, which we really don't want him to do. No. That's so harsh on someone who already has those issues to drink stuff to have more of those issues. Yeah. So, but I think that's everything. Awesome. Appreciate it, guys. You got this, Gage. Thank you.